I woke up this morning and I just realized we are now 15,000 people on this channel. Can you realize, guys? That's huge and amazing, thanks to you. Today, we're jumping back into animation with something fresh and super useful, selection sets. If you're an animator, you're gonna love this one. It's a simple but powerful new feature that makes your workflow in Unreal way faster and smoother. So let's dive right in and see how it works. So first off, what is new feature all about? What exactly is a selection set? Selection set is a brand new feature introduced in Unreal Engine 5.7 Preview. It basically lets you create and manage groups of controls, saving specific combinations of selections and even managing their visibility and more. It's a total game changer for animators because when you're working on complex rigs, for example, full of controls, finding and selecting the right ones can be a real pain. With selection sets, you'll spend way less time clicking around and way more time animating. Let's see how it works with our buddy Cacto Pistola. Yes, he's back to business. You need a character that already has a control rig setup in a sequencer. Once you switch to animation mode, you'll notice a brand new icon in the toolbar. It looks a bit like the select controls only icon, just further to the right. Quick note before we go on. The UI has been refreshed a bit in this version. Space switch, constraints, and the snapper tool are now grouped together under a single tab called constraining. It's cleaner, more organized, and overall just easier to use. And another nice touch. Unwell now saves your UI layouts and window positions when you restart the editor. So whatever workspace setup you prefer, it will be right there next time you open it. Now back to selection sets. Once you open the selection set tab, you'll see a simple but really handy interface. Here's how it works. Select the controls you want to include in your new set. Let's start with the master control. Then just click on add set and Unwell will ask you to name it. Let's call this one master. And that's it, your first selection set is ready. You can now repeat the process across your character, like I'm doing here, for example, with the left arm. What's really powerful with selection sets is how flexible they are. For example, you can mirror any set you've already created. Just right-click on it and you'll see a bunch of useful options, including Create Mirror and Select Mirror. You can either mirror the current selection only or generate a brand new mirrored set automatically, like I'm doing here. Super handy when you're working with symmetrical characters or rigs. You can also use Shift-click to select multiple sets at once and Ctrl-click to deselect any specific one. Really intuitive and quick to manage. But that's not all. If you select another control that's not part of your current set, you can easily update your selection sets, adding or removing controls from it, again via a simple right-click. And of course, you get all the basics in that same menu. Rename, delete, or change color of your sets for better organization. And now, once you've built all your selection sets, Here's where things get really interesting. You can isolate any set with a single right click. This is huge for animators. When you're working in a dense or heavy scene, being able to focus on just the controls you need without the rest of the clutter is a massive time saver. You can also hide or redisplay specific sets individually or bring everything back when you're done. Finally, one last cool detail. You can even set a key directly from the drop-down, making keyframing specific groups of controls easier than ever. Now let's take a look at the two icons on the right of the selection set panel. First up, and this one is super useful, is the export import icon. From here, you can export or import all your selection sets. And we will save them as a simple JSON file, which means you can easily reuse the same sets on other characters or projects. Super practical when you spend time organizing everything. If you open the JSON file, you'll see it's very straightforward. It's all name-based, so just make sure your control names are consistent across rigs to make the import work smoothly. Now the second icon is all about multi-character workflows. And it's a small but powerful addition. When you have multiple characters or skeletal meshes in your sequencer, deselecting this icon will reveal tabs for each character. This gives you the flexibility to decide which character, or even all characters, your selection set will apply to when you use them. If the icon is enabled, your set will focus only on the currently selected actor or the last selected one. Perfect when you're animating one character at a time. It's a small detail, but when you're juggling multiple rigs in a complex sequence, it makes a world of difference. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for your support. Don't hesitate to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe, as always. And I see you next week for a new one.
Tchau.